Well, as we wait for Sharon to give us that story here in Nairobi, one officer who survived the Kapendo attack has been recounting um, his ordeals. Has been recounting his ordeals. That's right. The officer says that he had to deploy many special tactics to survive the deadly attack. He spoke a short while ago from his hospital bed after a visit by the Inspector General of Police, David Kibayo. Right, well, um, I'm told that we do have Ian Wafula on the phone and he's going to be giving us some updates on the situation in that part of the country. Ian, I hope you can hear me. Yes, Nancy, I can hear you. Uh, exactly just about 30 minutes ago, we witnessed uh, the fifth firearm that was surrendered today uh, being handed over to the, di uh, to the di district count uh, to the deputy county commissioner, that is uh, Daniel Kirui. Uh, today, we also witnessed some of the professionals from the community, among them uh, two teachers who took their time off to go to talk to some of the elders and also the youth, trying to convince them to, to surrender these firearms and also uh, urging them to fulfill the promise that they gave the president uh, yesterday while he was with them at the, at the meeting. So out of this, a total of five firearms were, were surrendered today by some of the uh, Pokot youth who are involved in the ambush that saw 21 police officers die and three others, three, uh, three civilians dead. The Deputy County Commissioner says uh, fires, they are targeting to, to recover 22 firearms, of which uh, now they're left with 17 of them. Nancy? Well, um, Ian, if, if, if you can tell us exactly um, what is going on right now, what, is, what are the security arrangements at the moment? Uh, as of yesterday, we witnessed uh, KDF troops moving in uh, into Capedo, and because of the vastness of the land, we were not able to follow them exactly to uh, where they exactly to where they they were. But uh, there were complaints and rumors from the residents that in the morning at least four explosions were heard, and this is believed that the four bombs had been launched by the Kenya Defence Forces. And the rumors further said that at least two people had died, uh, two others had died from these explosions. But this was yet to be confirmed. Now, this, uh, the death of these two people angered uh, some of the Pokot elders who were in the process of talking to uh, some of the, the youth to voluntarily surrender the firearms. As of right now, there's still a bit of tension because it is yet to be identified where exactly the Kenya Defense Forces are targeting. But uh, it, the tension has subdued uh, compared to yesterday, Wilson. Well, thank you very much, Ian, for that update. We'll, of course, be keeping in touch with Ian Wafula, who is in the Carpedo area, to tell us more about the situation in that area.